Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at the coxal bone, also called the Oz coxa. It's actually a combination of three bones. Um, this app's been nice enough to split them up for us. Typically what I do is I'll draw a, a line and I'll say that this portion is part of the ilium, this portion of the acetabulum is part of the ilium, this portion is a part of the ischium, and this part of, is a part of the pubis. But we don't really have to do that because it's all already broken up for us. So here are the three bones. Up top, we have the ilium. Posteriorly, inferiorly, we have the ischium. And then in the front, we have the pubis. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the ilium first. I just want to kind of orient you guys. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a lateral view of the oscoxa. So we're looking, if you see the acetabulum, you know you're looking laterally because the femoral head articulates with the acetabulum. All right, so let's see what we have here. So we'll start off with the iliac ala. The iliac ala is just the majority of the ilium, actually. It's just this wing up here. This is all a part of the iliac ala. Easy enough. Then we have the iliac crest. If you've ever put your hands on your hips in frustration, you were putting them on your iliac crest, most likely. There's three lips. I'm doing my absolute best here with the mouse to draw those. So those are the um, lateral and medial lips with the intermediate lip, which is a lot like the crest of the spine of the scapula kind of idea running down the middle. Um, for the purposes of a quiz in my class, I'll just ask about the iliac crest. So uh, you're just going to be looking for a line somewhere on this, along this ridge to indicate iliac crest. All right, then we have our iliac tubercle. So if you're looking here at this ridge, you can see right here gets a little bit wider. How's that for a circle? So the iliac uh, tubercle specifically is this area right here. And that's, it's not quite that diamond shaped. It's just, it's just this area there. And that is the iliac tubercle. So it's somewhat anterior along the iliac crest. It's a widening of the crest. It sort of flares out. I think it's pretty pretty easy to see hopefully. Um, below that is something else called the iliac pillar. So if you're looking at this, you can see it's almost like there's two sections, or, or, or I, what am I trying to say? Basically that there's this dividing line between the posterior aspect and anterior aspect, and it takes the form of this little ridge, and the angle of the bone changes ever so slightly right there. So that pillar, that ridge here, is called the iliac pillar. Now we don't go into that sort of depth here, but there's also quite a bit of lines. You can kind of see some different gluteal lines and stuff. We won't cover those, um, but don't don't get those confused. The iliac pillar comes off the iliac tubercle here, goes down almost all the way to the acetabulum, or all the way to the acetabulum, depending on the bone and how well defined it is. Uh, let's look at the anterior iliac spines. So you can see the front has these two spines and the back has two spines. So you have an anterior superior iliac spine, which is located right here. You can typically feel that. Then you have an anterior inferior iliac spine right there. And then you have a posterior superior. And then a posterior inferior. So you have four iliac spines. If you look right here, you can see that there's a little notch. We call that the iliac notch. So that's anterior. The iliac notch is anterior. There's no iliac notch in between the posterior. Okay, so let's go back to the posterior view. We have the posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine. Um, that looks like that's all that's here, but there's actually a structure right here called the iliac tuberosity. 
not to be confused with the iliac tubercle over there. This is posterior. Now, you can see there's really not much there. We don't see a tuberosity necessarily, but um, you know that it's the only structure here because the only thing we're covering are the two posterior spines and the iliac tuberosity back here on this posterior aspect. So if you see something tagged in this region, it is the iliac tuberosity. It's pretty tough to see on the real bones as well. All right, now we have a, um, a notch. Uh, you know, I'm gonna label it and then I'm gonna add some connective tissue. So here it is, this is the greater sciatic notch. Greater sciatic notch there. There's a lesser down here, but that's on a different bone. And then there's a spine in between them, also on a different bone. So all we're labeling here is this one, the greater sciatic notch. Now, if I add connective tissue in, I haven't tried this yet, so we'll see. Yep, you can see it makes a fr uh, foramen. There's actually two, a, a greater and a lesser. Let's add some more stuff there. There you go. Now you can see why there's a foramen. Um, blood work, nerves, all sorts of stuff come out of there. Let's get back to what we're doing. So greater sciatic notch. Uh, the next structure is the iliac fossa. Now, if you're looking at this, you might already guess where's the iliac fossa. It's all of this area in here. This smooth, big smooth depression. The, the fossa is smooth like that to one, create some room, and also it's a origin for a pretty large muscle. One of your hip flexors called iliacus. Um, and then the last thing is the auricular surface. So if you remember, the sacrum, this was called the auricular surface of the sacrum. It kind of looked like an ear, which is why it was called the auricular surface. There is a matching auricular surface on the ilium. There it is. Auricular surface. And that is it for the ilium, my friends. We are done. So let's go now to the ischium. All right. So it it owns or about two fifths of the acetabulum belong to the ischium. Um, so I'm going to label some of these acetabular structures. The whole thing isn't a part of the ischium. It's just it made sense to do it here. So. But just know that in reality, a lot of these structures belong to multiple bones. So let's start off by labeling the acetabulum. This is a pretty remarkable structure. Your, your hip joint, your femoroacetabular joint, is incredibly stable. We hear about hip dislocations in the elderly, but that's only typically only after they've had a hip replacement. Before you mess with this structure with surgery, is actually incredibly stable. Really young kids can dislocate it, um, and then people who've had a hip replacement can dislocate it. But other than that, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. The acetabular labrum, which is this cartilage fibrocartilage ring, is actually smaller. You can't see it. Let me see if I can add. It's actually smaller than the head of the femur. So there's really no way to get that out. And you can see these massive look. There's the joint capsule. Here's doesn't look like a whole lot there, but actually it makes the opening of this acetabulum smaller so that the head of the femur is not going anywhere. And then these are some of the biggest ligaments in the body. So anyway, pretty cool, pretty cool joint. So different from your shoulder, which is really the only similar joint in the body because it's a ball and socket joint, but the shoulder is actually somewhat easily dislocated, and that's because it has to be so mobile. The hip goes for stability even more than mobility, but it's still pretty mobile, so it's an interesting joint. Okay, enough of that. Um, let's look at the acetabular fossa and the acetabular notch. 
and then the lunate surface, which uh, is not on our notes on anponline.com for some reason. Uh, you don't have to add it. That was my mistake. But I won't ask about it, but if you're wondering, this is the lunate surface. This is the actual articular surface of the acetabulum. The head of the femur articulates with this. And that's called the lunate surface. It kind of looks like a crescent moon, I guess, so that makes sense. Um, and then this area here is the acetabular fossa. Acetabular fossa. And then if we take kind of an inferior view, let's see if we can do this. This is harder than I thought it would be. Whoa. How cool is technology? Okay. So this notch right there is the acetabular notch. I'm going to try something. I should, always, I should practice this before I just start recording, but let's see what happens. Okay, it didn't didn't really do what I hoped. There is a um, an artery in there, but it's really only present in children, so that might be why it's not there. Let's look at connective tissue. See if we can see ligamentum teres. Oh, they're calling it the round ligament of the femur, which is okay. But ligamentum teres or ligamentum capitis is the name I'm used to. And that ligament goes into the fovea capitis of the femur and protects an artery. That artery um, isn't patent as an adult, but as a kid, there's an artery there. And that's why the notch is there for this ligament and this artery. All right, let's go on to the ischial spine. All right, here's the ischial spine. Right there, ischial spine. Ischial tuberosity, I'm sitting on mine right now. You may be too. Let's see if we can get them both in here. So these are your ischial tuberosities, your IT tube, or I'm sorry, your ischial tubes. That's where you sit. Unless you're slouching a lot like me right now, then you might be sitting back here on your sacrum. But anyway, those are your ischial tuberosities. A lot of muscles attach here, your hamstrings attach here. So they're pretty big, pretty big structures. Um, and then let's look at your lesser sciatic notch. So we know greater. You know ischial spine. Now we're adding in lesser, and let me get a better. Here's the lesser sciatic notch right there. All right, last structure for the ischium is the groove for obturator internus. Now, this will be cool because I'm used to having to just explain this with words, and I always fall short. Let's see if we can add in obturator internus. It's externus. I need to hide some stuff. Quadratus. It's still there. Adductors. Oh, I just brought them all right back. <laughs> okay, let's see. There we go. Operator internus. Look at that, how crazy is that? So this is the muscle I'm talking about. It covers the obturator foramen, which we haven't named yet. This big hole right here. You have one internally and externally. So you have an obturator internus and externus. But what's really cool about this one is it does this hook. It hooks around and um, attaches. Now this is challenging for me because I'm used to every anatomy teacher I've ever had labeling the groove for operator internus right here underneath this lip, right? This, this groove here. But again, this is, this is just a model. So who knows who's right, except I'm pretty used to seeing it there. Um, anyway, it's a groove for operator internus. Let's add in, oh boy, let's add in the, this is so cool because all of these, tuberosities and stuff we're learning or we will learn on the femur we see why they exist because of these muscles 
But anyway, there is the obturator in turn So what do you think it does? What does it do if it attaches right there and here? It externally rotates the femur. Let's see if oops, I'm let's see if we can take a, a superior view and imagine pulling the femur this way. You know, here's the head. Axis of rotation is kind of going superior inferior through this joint. So if you pull on it behind, that axis of rotation is going to rotate externally. So if you think about sitting. Um, cross-legged that's kind of a you know full external rotation of the hip and this muscle would be a part of that so would a lot of other muscles like your glutes and stuff all right so let's um let's get rid of the muscle so i'm going to uh label what i'm used to labeling it and maybe if i need to amend this i will but um, this groove here, groove for operator internus. So All right, so that is ischium. Let's look at the pubis. All right, so the pubis is the smallest of the three. His hand is in the way. Um, the first structure we'll label here is the symphysis pubis or pubic symphysis. So the symphysis itself, I'm going to add in connective tissue, it's this fibrocartilage disc. But we name the articular surfaces as well, so we call this symphysis pubis. There we go. The pubic crest is the top. Here, oh, oh. So here we go. This would be the pubic crest right here. There's some other structures, pectin pubis and things um, we're not going to name, but we are going to name the uh, pubic tubercle, which is right there. Kind of see it sticking out from the pubic crest. That just leaves us with a couple other structures left. So um, here is the uh, superior, oops, you can't see green on green. This arm of the pubis here is called the superior pubic ramus, and this arm down here is called the inferior pubic ramus. So superior and inferior pubic rami, right there. And then our last, our last structure, which you guys kind of already know, is this big foramen right here. The obturator foramen. Um, anyway, there it is. Obturator foramen. That's it. Ilium, ischium, pubis. Thanks, guys.